In this lesson, we shall focus on maths, mathematics, Euclidean, geometry for grades 11 and 12. We shall look at graded sets of riders, write a combination of several theorems in actually one geometry question at a time. We shall spend time on the similarity and proportionality theorem and a lot of results and proofs. And we begin as follows. Right, we actually begin by recapping on some of the fundamental um, aspects of Euclidean geometry of what we, what we term um, circle geometry as well. In the diagram, PQ is a common code of the two circles. Right, I need your attention. PQ is a common code. What does that mean to say it is a common code? We understand that PQ is a code of each of the two circles we have in front of us. Right, so the center M of the larger circle lies on the circumference of the smaller circle. Right, here is the center M of the larger circle, but it lies on the circumference of the smaller circle, as shown in the diagram. I need your full attention to actually analyze this geometry graded set of Rider's question. P, M, and Q is a cyclic quadrilateral. We take a look. P is this one, right? And we have M there, N there, and Q there is a cyclic quadrilateral in the smaller circle. Well, there it is. We have actually a cyclic quadrilateral in the smaller circle there. QN is produced to R, right? We look at QN, QN has been produced to R. There is R on the circumference of the larger circle. Okay, we continue to analyze and read through the question, but very, very carefully. NM produced meets the code PR at S, right? We actually are able to see that here we have NM uh, produced me meets the code PR at the point S. The point S is clearly there. Okay. We analyze further. Give a reason why the angle N2 equals X. Right. So we know that the angle P2 is X. We're interested right now in finding the angle or in actually giving a reason why the angle N2, and there is the angle N2, the examiner is saying, hang on, it is clear that it is actually equal to X, but give a reason why this angle here is exactly equal to X in the question. Right, so there it is. So we are able to remember from grade 11, some of the very, very important results we ever learned. And we know from grade 11, if there is a circle this way, moreover, we actually are able to perform a construction like this. And this is the case. And this angle here is always equal to the angle there. Why is this the case? Right. Right, 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 right. We continue. So now this is called the exterior angle of cyclic quad. And that, we, this, that is what we state as actually our reason. And we say exterior angle of cyclic quad. Exterior angle of cyclic quad. Exterior angle of cyclic quad. Oh, there it is. So now if we're able to see that now we take a look at this here. And we take a look at this and this goes all the way there. This goes all the way here like so and this is sitting there. So we can see therefore that the reason why the angle N2 equals X, we actually state that it's because of the exterior. Angle of cyclic quad. 
exterior angle of cyclic quad. Right, any question? No question. No, sir. Okay, good. Forward. I must indicate that you'll, you'll try some of the questions. You'll attempt some of the questions as you move along. 10.2.2, write down another angle equal in size to X. We know N2 is already X and this one is X. The examiner is saying, please do them a favor. Write down another angle that equals X. What, what is your take? What do you think? If I give the answer, you have exactly two minutes. Two marks this question, two minutes. What other angle do you think equals X in the diagram? I'm giving you a chance to play around. Are you able to see the diagram? I, I can. Okay, good. So what angle do you think equals X? Once again, you have two minutes. Don't, don't rush and break your bones. Don't break your bones. Take your time. If you can't see well, talk to me, please. Um, so can you say Q1? Yeah, I, I, was, say Q1. I was gonna say angle subtended by the same. Because we know oh. that M is the center of the larger circle, a line drawn from the center to the circumference. What do you call a line drawn from the center of a circle to the circumference? Um, the radius. Call the radius. Well done. It's called the radius. So first things first, we know that uh, in this case, right, the angle Q1 is equal to what? It's equal to X. The angle Q1 equals X. Why is this the case? So angles opposite. Yes, angles opposite equal equal sides angles opposite equal sides what sides are equal here right it is mp that is equal to qm why is mp equals to qm because they are radii they are radii any question no sir okay we move forward Oh, so now I have a yes, question. Yes, please. I want to ask, can't you just say angles opposite um, radii? Yes, so do we have yes, 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 you can actually say that, but obviously we are dealing with an isosceles triangle. Okay. Your, yes, so your, if you can, yeah, you can say, obviously, these are angles opposite equal sides, or you can say the base angles of an isosceles triangle. Oh, yeah. and uh, but you can also say this angle is opposite, obviously radii of the same circle, um, right? And there are angles in the same triangle, so that will be correct. Okay, that's correct. Okay, yes, move sir. forward. Move forward. Point point two point three. Determine the size of the angle R in terms of X. The angle N2 equals X. The angle Q1 is also X. The examiner is saying determine the size of the angle R in terms of X. What is this angle here in terms of X? What is the angle there? The angle R in terms of X. Too easy. First things first, we find the angle M1 in terms of X. Right, so now we're looking at 10.2.3 and you say in triangle.
in triangle. MPQ. Right, let us deal with triangle MPQ. In triangle MPQ, this equals this. Right, so we're able to see that the angle M1 is equal to what? It's equal to 180 degrees minus 2x. Why is this the case? Why is the angle M1 equal to 180 degrees minus 2x? In the triangle MPQ, why is that the case? Some of the angles in a triangle. Angles of a triangle. Angles of triangle. Or angles in a triangle. Also correct. Right. So now we want to find the size of the angle R. So what is the size of the angle R? If we already know that this angle is 100, in 80 degrees minus double x. What is the size of the angle R? Okay, obviously we know that the angle M1 is equal to what? It's equal to twice the angle R. Why is this the case? Angle so center. Angle the center. Yes. Is two times. Well so done. Can you, yes. Can you please highlight the shape because I'm struggling to see the angle at the centers two times. Okay, okay, yeah, okay, that's fine. So you have this shape here in the larger circle, and uh, you have oh. section this here. Right, oh. so it, yeah, definitely. So it is clear, therefore, that the angle at the center is actually two times the angle at the what? At the circumference. Two times. So the angle at center equals two times. Uh, angle at circumference. Circumference. Right. So what do we have here? Okay, at this point, we know that angle M1 is twice R, which means the angle M1 is 100 in 80 degrees minus double X, which equals twice angle R. Dividing through both left and right by two, it means that the angle R is, if you divide 180 by 2, you get a 90 minus X. Right, so we're to determine the size of angle R in terms of X, and we can see it is actually precisely 90 degrees minus X in geometrical size. Any question? No, sir. No question. We move forward. We move forward to the next question. Next, we want to prove that PS equals SR. Want to prove that PS equals SR. PS is equal to SR. Want to prove this. To prove that PS is equal to SR, where do we start and what do we do? In which triangle do we work? What do we do? So can't you prove that S1 and S2 are equal or? Yeah, uh-huh. Or wait, I'm trying to see. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Take your time. Two minutes. I give you the time. Two minutes. And then we shall do it, to, shall do it together. <laughs> We shall do it together. Don't stress too much. I just want you to think about it first. Because now you're going to meet it in the prelims. This kind of a question. But this is all uh, very, very basic grade 11 stuff. 
Euclid Levin theorems, and then we shall look at similarity and proportionality. But this is just a warm up. Because before we do serious things, we must first warm up. The players in soccer, before they start playing, what do they do? They first warm up. Because when they're sitting down, the body becomes cold and the muscles become relaxed. Now they try, they try to tone the muscles to energize themselves. Right, I want to prove that PS equals SR. I want you to think about it. And then suggest what we need to prove to have exactly that result established. I know it's too easy. I know. It's obvious. But we need to work on it together. It's already sitting in front of you. It's already watching you. But I don't want to tell you, because if I tell you, then you're like, okay. Then you never learn to think, you see. And that's a problem. Children must be taught to think. Geometry is about reasoning. One minute left. One minute. So the only thing that I see that they share in common is, is the angle is. That's the only thing that I yeah. see that they share in common. Besides yeah. that, I don't. Okay, that's fine, that's fine. <laughs> Never mind, we're not here to crack your skull. We're here to train you. You have to make sure that you become the best you can, you can be. Let us reason together. Let us reason together. Now to start with here, because this is way too obvious, we're going to work in triangle. So we're doing 10.2.4. We're going to work in triangle, in triangle and SR. Shall work in triangle and SR. There are certain things you already know. Like we know the angle N2 is what? It's X. X. 90 degrees minus X is the size of the angle R, because that's what we said. We said R is 90 degrees minus X, like so. Upon careful examination, we already have the answer, but we must put the answer in, in order. Mr. Examiner, we know that angle R is 90 degrees minus X. And, we know that the angle N2 is X. That we know. We know that this one is 90 degrees minus X, and we know that this one here, N2, is actually X in size. So it remains to find the size of the angle S2. Right, so we can see that the angle S2 is 180 degrees minus the other two angles, because it's the only one we want. So it is uh, 180 degrees, Minus 90 degrees, minus X, but minus X as well, giving us the angle S2 equals 180 degrees. One hundred and eighty degrees. Okay, yeah, this is 90 degrees minus X. Anyhow, we need to put a plus here. Because it's 180 degrees minus this angle together with this. Minus 90 degrees minus X plus X, which gives us 180 degrees minus 90. And then now this is actually plus X minus X. The angle is two. So 180 minus 90 is 90, 90 degrees. And this is what? The reason for this here, angles of 
of triangle. Angles of triangle. So in other words, we've been able to establish that in fact, what we, what we are sure of is the fact that the angle S2 is 90 degrees precisely. Like this. Now the angle S2 is exactly 90 degrees, like so. And therefore, and therefore, PS is actually equal to SR. PS is SR. Why is this the case? Line from center. Line from center perpendicular to what? Perpendicular to chord. Line from center perpendicular to chord. Okay, that's a grade 11 theorem. Line from center, because M is the center, that is perpendicular to the chord, bisects the chord. So because we showed that the angle S2 is actually 90 degrees, it must follow that the angle S2, therefore, what it does is it bisects the chord. Any question? No question. No, sir. Move forward. We move forward. Right, here's another question. Yet another geometry question. Very, very interesting. And we're back to some of the basics of geometry. Right, O is the center of the bigger circle. We can see that O is the, is, is, is the center of the bigger circle. Now, O lies on the circumference of the smaller circle. There is O on the circumference of the smaller circle. O, W, V, U. O, W, V, U are points on the circumference of the smaller circle. Ah, you can see the O, the W, the V, and the U are like points on the circumference of the smaller circle. T, S, V, U. T, S, V, U are points on the circumference of the bigger circle. You can see the T, the S, the V, and the U are on the circumference of the bigger circle. Name four other angles, each equal to X, with reasons. Right. There it is. So I think I found them. Okay. Which one do you think is the case? First. S1. The angle S1. Well done. The angle S1 equals X. Why? Um, angle X at the center. center is is equal to two times angle at the circumference. Two times angle at circumference. Next. And then um, V is equal to X. The angle V. Which particular V? Is it the whole of V? V3, sorry, V3. V3 equals X. Well done. So S1 is already X. V3 is X. Why would V3 be X? Um, angles subtended by the same chord. Angles subtended by the same chord or angles in same segment. Same segment. Next. And then the whole of U, U1 plus U2 is equal to X. The whole of U, which is U1 and U2. So in other words, the angle U equals X. Why would this be the case? Because of angles opposite equal sides radii yeah opposite equal sides radii okay 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 yeah um so now which triangle are you looking at um okay obviously you are right so in other words because o is the center of the yes, sir. right so that is correct to then say if o is the center of the larger circle these are radii, right? So we have exactly that. That at this point, what are you able to see? You are able to see clearly that uh, you have uh, angles. Opposite. Equal sides. What are the equal sides? Um, right. So you're able to see that OV is equal to what? 
O U. Um, o U. What are these? They are radii. Radii. Okay. Right. That's correct. Next. And then I'm thinking V1 is equal to X because it's an um, exterior angle of the of the cyclic quad W-O-U-V. W-O-U-V. Yeah, it looks it looks that way. Yeah, but a little bit a little bit different. What other angle? Yeah. Another one? I'm thinking I was thinking V1. I'm not sure. As well. Right, yeah, but oh, yeah, but... oh, sir. T. Yeah. T. <laughs> T. You think the angle T? Okay, that's fine. Remember, we're learning, so there's no haste here. You think the angle T? Why would T be X? Because it's angles in the same segment as well. Angles in the same segment. But you need to look at it carefully. Because if you look at angles in the same segment, you're going to look at T like this. And then it would be angles in the same segment if the X was this. Oh, okay. But now it's a, bit, it's a bit too big because it was supposed to be here, like that, something like that, you know? But now this, this U1 is now taking a little bit, you know, something outside. Okay, I can't, I don't think I knew the other one, but yeah. <laughs> Okay, thank you for trying. Thank you for trying. That's what makes the lesson. Right, however, we are able to see that clearly the angle W1 and the angle V3 are nice angles. The angle W1 Okay, we continue. All right. Okay, let's continue. Right, we I was seeing I was missing another angle in particular when I just paused a little bit. I will we're looking at the angle um W1 is the angle V3 which equals X. Why is this the case? The angle W1 equals angle V3 which equals X. Why? Do you see? Do you agree that angle V W1 equals angle V3? Yes, sir. Why? Because the angles in the same segment. Angles in same. Angles in same segment. So we have mentioned one, two, three, four angles, each equal to X. Right, that's awesome. Good news. Let's continue with more problems. Determine right now the size of the angle W2. Determine the size of the angle W2. So we found like V3 is X. You're seeing that this one is X. We've seen that the whole of U is X. You have seen that this one is X. Determine the size of the angle W2. What do you think? Right. Okay. Okay, we continue. We continue. Right. Okay, yeah. What do you think the angle W2 is equal to in terms of X? Sir, so, I don't yes. know. So I'm not sure actually. Because here is the question that is 10.2. 10.2 says determine the size of W2 in terms of X with reason. Oh, 
So, yeah. isn't so we, it, need, we need W2. Yup. On opposite side of a cyclic quad equal to 180. So W2 mm -hmm. is 180 minus 2x, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, yeah. It sounds very... Yeah, opposite, uh, opposite uh, angles of a cyclic quad are supplementary and therefore their sum is 100 and 80 degrees. So what do you then think here? So I'm thinking that W2 is equal to 180 minus this X minus X. Okay, minus so the U. W2 is 180 degrees minus what? Minus, minus 2X. That's what I'm thinking. Why? It equals... Because right. if the opposite sides are supplementary and we know that u is x and yes. w is x, then we then in order to find w2, we have to minus the 2 by 180. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't know if you hear me. Yes, okay. Yeah. What do you think the size of, what is the size of the angle O2? Of O2? Yep. This one. So O2 O2 is equals to 180 minus x as well. Minus 2x as well. 180 because, degrees minus 2x. Why? Because it is oh I see. Okay. Yeah. 180 minus 2x because of some of angles in a triangle. So angles in a triangle. Angles in a triangle. Good. And then O2 sub... So you know this one is 180 O2. degrees minus 2x, yeah? O2 and W2. So W2... W2 is equal to the angle O2, and it is equal to, therefore, 180 degrees minus 2x. Why? Angles in the same segment. Angles in the same segment. Well done. Angles in the same in the same segment. Angles in the same sag. And say that. Angles in the same sag, and the examiners know that. Angles in the same segment. Like so. We're good. Next. Yes. Right. So we actually obviously have established the size of the angle W2 is also 180 degrees minus double X. What is, prove that WS is WV. Prove that WS is WV. Right, so yeah. Here is W S. Prove that W S is actually W V. W S is W V. You want to prove that these are equal to each other. And I know that you've already it's too easy. It's already too obvious. So I know the angles that we're supposed to be proving. Okay, which angles um, are we supposed to prove? We're supposed to prove that V1 is equal to S2. We're supposed to prove that V1 is equal to S2, is it? Okay, that's fine. That's fine, yup, that's correct. It's pretty, we are pretty much there within the vicinity of what we expect to do. Yeah, let's get cracking. So S2 is equal to O2 because it's attended in the same segment. So it's going to be 180 minus, S2 is equal to 180 minus 2X. S2 is 180 degrees minus 2X. Why is that yes. the case? Because they're in the same segment. They're in the same segment. S2 is in the same segment with which angle? O2. The angle O2. Okay, but you see, obviously, I mean, they must be on the circumference of the same circle. S2 is an angle on the larger circle, but O2 is on the smaller circle. Oh, they have to be, okay. I see it. Um, I hear you. 
but angles in the same segment, it must form like a bow tie on the same circle. But yeah, I can see O2, it looks like it's in the same segment, but yeah, it is on the smaller circle, then that one is on the larger circle. Next, what do you need? Okay, there are a couple of things you're able to see, like the angle S1 plus S2 equals 90 degrees. This angle is 90 degrees. Why? From angles, um, something semicircle. Okay. The reason. There's something to do with the semicircle. Okay. Yeah, the line here makes it a semicircle. It's one. Yeah, two. yeah, definitely. That's an angle in semicircle. Yeah. Why? So because TV, the core TV is is equal to 180, the angle is equal to 180. And since it's, I don't know how to explain it, the angle, okay. yep. two times angle the circumference, basically. But okay, that's fine. TV yes, okay, I hear you. <laughs> I hear you. So the angle S2 is equal to what? The angle S2 equals what? Because you already know that S1 is X. So S2 would have to be exactly what? Would have to be exactly 90 degrees minus X. So this one is 90 degrees minus X. V1. What is the size of the angle V1? Okay, now we want to find the size of the angle V1. But you already know the angle S2, which is 90 degrees minus X. Yup. And uh, what else do we know? So V1 yeah. is the same. I feel like V1 has the same reason. No, it doesn't have the same reason. Never okay. mind. Okay, that's fine. It looked okay. like it had the same reason because of SW. Mm -hmm. WS. I thought maybe because of that it would have. Okay, you got this one. We got this one to be X. You also got this one to be X. We got this one to be 180 degrees minus double X. But we also got W2 to 180 degrees minus twice X. So what is the size therefore of the angle? Right. So what is the size, for instance, of the angle W3? Right. So you have to think. Yeah, the size of the angle W3. Or, for example, the size of the angle W... Two we know very well, and then we know um, the angle S2 as well. Can we be able to get V1? So I, so I found W3 as minus 2X. Uh, please come again. I found W3 as minus 2X because... Um, SU is a straight line, so angle in a straight line, W. So that would mean that W, W3 is equal to what? Minus 2X. Or just 2X? Minus 2X. Why? Because of angles on a straight line. <laughs> okay, that's fine. I want us to test this. Okay, what what do we, what can we add? Because they must add up to 180, the, the W3 and, 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 and W2. So if this one is already 180 degrees minus 2x, what can we add to these to get 180? So, so what is 180 degrees, y'all, minus 2x? What do we add? If we add 2x, what do we get? 180. Yeah. Okay, so take a look. Okay, y'all. So the angle V1 would be 
Okay, that's fine. You can just say, for instance, doesn't matter. You can say, for instance, please, your, um, now the angle W3 is equal to 2x. Why is that the case? So angle yeah. on a straight line. Angles on a straight line. Angles on a straight line. Yeah. If you add these, if you add the two x to these, you get exactly one eighty. Right. So that's what we have. So this one here, these are angles on a straight. Straight line. Right, so. Right, so this is the case that W3 is actually 2x because of that. Therefore, the angle V1 is equal to what? V1 is equal to, is equal to, 90 minus x. Yeah, so that yeah. 2 is 180 degrees minus 2x. This this was proved. Uh, it doesn't matter. You can say that. It was actually most certainly. Yeah, it was proved. Uh, yeah, it was proved here. It was proved uh, in 10.2 above. All right. So, yeah, next. And then you say um, V1 is equal to 180 minus open brackets minus 2x plus 90 minus x. Uh, okay. All right, so that's what we have, but yeah. So now, okay, yeah, the W2 is there. What is the size of the angle V1 now? V, V1 is 19 minus X. Yeah, so oh, wait. One, yeah, that's fine. You're right. So you, how do you know it's 19 minus X? Maybe that's what you need to ask. How do you know? Okay. 180 minus... Um, minus 2X minus 90 degrees minus X, which is 180 minus 90, 90 degrees. And then this one is X and this is minus X. 90 degrees minus X. Okay, so if that is the case, therefore SW is equal to WV. Um, and the reason for that is sides. Okay, you can write it uh, the way it has been given. You can say, therefore, WS is WV, and these are sides opposite equal angles. Sides opposite equal angles, right? Okay, we've proven that WS equals WV. Any question? No, sir. Okay, we move forward. Right, here's something easy. In the diagram, MP is the diameter of a circle. Yeah, right, here it's M and there it's P, the diameter of a circle centered at O. O is the center. MP cuts the code and R at T. Right, we can see T there. Radius and O and Codes PR and N and MR are drawn. The angle R1 is 69 degrees. The angle R1 is 69 degrees. The angle R1 is 69 degrees. Right, determine giving reasons the size of the angle R2. Okay, we're reversing some of the basics. Why would this be the case?
Okay, yeah. Um, want to find the size of the angle R2. What is the size of the angle R2? What do you think and why? So we can yeah. see that the whole of angle R is equal to 90 degrees because of the whole of angle R is 90 degrees. Why? Angles of a semicircle. Angle R equals 90 degrees, and the reason is that with angle in semi. Semi what? Semi so R2 is equals to 90 minus R2 60. R2 equals 90 degrees minus 69, 69 degrees. Why? Okay, yeah, well, so, so it's obvious, it's obvious. Right, so that the angle R2, okay, what is 90 degrees minus 69? 60, I mean 21, 21. Exactly 21 degrees. Exactly 21 degrees. Next, want to find the size of the angle O1. O1 is equal to two times R1 because Angle O1 is two times the angle R1, why? Because um, angle in the sense is two times angle. Angle in the sense. Equals two times angle at circumference. Right angle at center is two times angle at circumference. And therefore the angle O1, it's, it's double 69, 138 degrees. Yes, sir. Right, enter YAR. And the reason for the substitution is that the angle R1 is actually exactly equal to 69 degrees. Yes, sir. Okay, yeah. And then, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so what do you think? Yeah, so this is O1. O1 is okay. 138 degrees and we've got it. We've got it. We move on to the next question. What is the size of the angle M1? This one here. M1 is equals to R2. Because M1 it's, equals it's... R2, I agree with you. I agree with you. The angle M1 equals the angle R2, which equals what? 21. Which equals 21 degrees. Why is that the case? Why is M1 equals R2? Why? Angles in the same segment. Angles in same segment. Angles in same segment move on next we want to find the size of the angle m2 what is the size of the angle m2 for example Yeah. So, um, I'm not sure, but I'm thinking about using the the, the thingy. Uh huh. The fun angles. The oh, using the fun, fun, using fun, and continue. Okay, yeah, yeah. So, okay, want to find the size of the angle and uh, of the angle m2 yeah because they want us to prove that um it given that n o and p r are parallel wait okay Okay, yeah, so want, to find the, want to find the size of the angle M2, right? Want to find the size of the angle M2. So, yeah. I, I think we found the angle O1, which is equal to 138. Yes. So, we can find 
find the angle of O2 because find of this angle. one 138 degrees, yeah. So what is the size of the angle M2? So so um we find then we find O2, right? Yeah. And then O2 is 180 minus 38, which gives us 42. That yeah. makes P, that makes P 42 because NO and PR are parallel since it's given to us. Okay, because NO is parallel to PR. Good. Then so P is also equal to 42. Then in order to find M2, you say 180 minus 19 minus 42. Yeah, so you really are on point and uh, it makes a lot of a lot of sense. So that uh, what we have here, so one find the size of, of the angle M2. Right, so now you saw that this is part to this. So what, what do you think the angle O2 is? O2 is 42. It's 180 minus 40, minus 138 because of angles on a straight line. Um, okay, 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 okay. Right, 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 right. Okay, we continue. Okay. Okay. Okay, we'll continue, please. Yeah, I'm still here with you. Okay, so. All right. What are you saying? What did you say angle O um, angle O two is? Forty two degrees. It is forty two degrees. Okay, so the angle O two is forty two degrees. Okay, that's fine. Okay. Okay, we are we're here. We're here. Okay. Okay, look. The angle O2 is 42 degrees. Why? Because what is the reason? Um angles on a straight line. Angles on a straight line. That we are right. Angles on a straight straight line. And angle P is also 42, alternating. So now, then this one you can see is 42 degrees, and therefore the angle P is equal to 42 degrees. Why? Because of the alternate angles. Why do we have alternate angles? Because they're parallel lines. What are parallel lines? And O is and part two. PR. Okay. So we have that this one is 42 degrees. Then what is the size of the angle M2? M2 is 180 minus 90. Minus 90 degrees minus 42 degrees. Is it correct? Yes, sir. It's 48. What is the answer? It 48. is 48 degrees. Why is, it, why is M2 equals 180 degrees minus 90 minus 42? Why? Because of Angles in a triangle. Angles in a triangle. Angles in a triangle. All right. So, any question? No, sir. No question. So, we move on to the next one. Right. So, in the diagram below, A, B, C, D is a cyclic quad. 
But also A, B, and D, C are produced to meet at E. A, B, and right, and uh, up here, C, or D, C are produced to meet at E. A, D, and B, C are produced to meet at F, and there is F, and we have that the angle A, F, B is 2X. Right, so the angle A, F, B is double X, there it is. The angle D, A, B is 3X. There it is. Your D, A, B is 3X. And the angle A, E, D is X. A, E, D is X. Determine giving reasons the value of X. I'm giving you two minutes. Then we shall do it together. Some two minutes. Then we shall do the corrections. Right. Okay, you have one minute left. Right, how far? How far? Um, almost done. All right. Then we shall do corrections when you're done. Okay. Yes, sir. Something. Okay, what did you get as the answer? Should I give you the straight answer or guide you? Uh, yeah, the yeah, the straight answer. The straight answer first, and then I will so I got, I'll look for the steps. So I got um x is equal to twenty. Well done. X equals twenty degrees. Okay. Yeah. I mean, you really are on point.
Now, the couple of things that you can see, because uh, I agree with you there, there is this one from grade 10, so 20 is correct. So now from grade 10, we know that the angle D1 is actually equal to X plus three X, which is four X. And this is exterior angle of triangle. Exterior angle of triangle. The angle D2. Okay, if this one is 4x, then for the angle D2 is 180 degrees minus 4x. Angles on a straight line. Angles on a straight line. So that this one is 180 degrees minus 4x. Right, so that's what we have. Next, uh, we have that the angle B1. Right, the angle B1 also from grade 10. The angle B1 is 3x plus 2x, which is 5x. Why is this the case? Exterior angle of triangle. So that, okay, so we have that this one is 5x is equal to this. So that the angle B1 is D2 exterior angle of cyclic quad. The B1 is 5x. The D2 is 180 degrees minus 4x. So that now you say 5x and that which is 9x is 180 degrees. So you divide by 9. You divide 180 by that, you get 20 degrees. So well done to you. 20 degrees is the correct answer. 20 degrees is indeed the correct answer. So because we're to determine giving reasons the value of X and we've found the value of X to be exactly equal to 20 degrees. Yes, please. So I did it differently. What did you do? I, I looked at A, A, D, E as its own triangle. Yeah. And A, A, B. BF as its own triangle. Yeah. And then I solve for B2 and D2. Okay, 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 okay. Leo, let's let's look at that together. So you looked at A D E as its own triangle. Yes, sir. Okay, in triangle A D E. Mm -hmm. So what did you do? Is it what with A D E? Yes, sir. So since we know that since we have the two angles, I said yeah. okay, D2 is equal to 180. Minus 3x minus D2 x. equals 180 degrees minus what? 3x minus x. Which is equal to? 180 minus 4x. Yeah. And then I did the same with um, A, B, F to find B2. So uh, you B2 did the same in the triangle A, B, F. Yes, sir. Right, so what do you guys the angle D2, uh, the, the angle B2, right? Yes, which, sir. Which one? Are you sure B2? One, yeah, 180. B2. 180 minus 2x minus 3x. Okay, which is 180 minus what? And then it's 180 minus 5x. Okay, so and B2 then is 180 degrees minus um 5x and this one is 180 degrees minus 4x yeah then since we know that the the opposite angles of a uh, cyclic quad is this the angle supplementary then i said that um 180 minus 5x plus 180 minus 4x is equal to um 
180. Good, good, good. And yeah, then pinch, yeah. Sulfate. Yeah, this is and sulfate X and upper. Yeah. Okay. So on 80 minus, it's 180 degrees minus 5x. 180 degrees minus 4x equals 180 degrees. And the four, the 180 degrees is gonna cancel one of these, giving us exactly equals 9x. Okay, yeah, and the X is 20 degrees, correct. Okay, good, this is correct, this is correct. So in this case, you would say the 180 degrees minus, the DT equals 180 degrees minus. So the reasons for these obviously are that angles in triangle, angles in triangle, but also this one here, angles in triangle. Okay, so we're good. Okay, so <clears throat> we're good. All right, so. All right, so you continue. Next point. Right, we move to the next question, All right? Right, let's look at this one. In the diagram, TSR is the diameter of the larger circle having center S. Cot TQ of the larger circle cut a smaller circle at M. PQ is a common tangent to the two circles at Q. SQ is drawn. Right, SQ is drawn. But moreover, RP is perpendicular to PQ. RP is perpendicular to, to PQ, but also the line segment. MS is parallel to QR. MS is parallel to QR. Proof giving reasons that uh, SQ is the diameter of the smaller circle. We need to prove that SQ is the diameter of the smaller circle. How do you prove that SQ is the diameter of the smaller circle? What are we supposed to look for? What do you think? You have two minutes. So I think we need to find M2 as an angle. And then from M2, you can say angles opposite, up angles at the same, angle at the center two times angle at the circumference. <laughs> Angle at the center. All right, all right, that's fine. That is okay. That's all right. So let's take a look. Sorry, sir, for the noise. That's My mom fine. That's fine. That's fine. So now, right, you were saying something, and the yeah. Please come again. Please come again. So I was saying, sorry, I thought I was unmuted. So we need to find the angle of M2. Right, you need to find the angle of M2, right? Correct. So what do you think the size of M2 is? So the, the size of M2 has to be 90 degrees, but I'm not sure about the reason. Okay, yeah, that's correct. The size of M2 must be 90 degrees, yeah? So that SQ therefore becomes a diameter, and therefore it would mean that SQ subtends an angle of 90 degrees at the circumference of the circle. Right, so we wish to find the size of the angle M2. Let us find it. I agree with you, it must be 90 degrees, but why? Because, um, yeah, okay, let me, let me hear what you have to I'm say. I'm not sure. 
so I was gonna say I'm not sure. Oh, so um, okay, never mind. It's not gonna work. Never mind. Yeah. <laughs> okay, that's fine. Okay, because it's about practice. Okay, we're practicing here. But now this angle here, because S is the center, is the center. S is the center of the larger circle. So this line here is the diameter that is passing through the center. And if it, if it is the diameter, therefore, the diameter subtends an angle of how many degrees of circumference. In other words, we are effectively then saying the angle Q1 plus the angle Q2 is 90 degrees. Why? Because it's an angle in semicircle. Angle in semicircle. Right, so it's an angle in semicircle. Right, so, okay. Right, so we have that this angle here, uh, Q1, Q2, is actually exactly 90 degrees. Next. So that the angle M2 is actually therefore equal to 90 degrees. Why? Co-interior angles. So these are co-interior angles. Well done. They are co-interior angles. Why? What are the better lines? MS is parallel to... MS is parallel to QR. Mm -hmm. Next. Okay, yeah, then, um, therefore, SQ is the what? It's the diameter. SQ is the diameter. Why is SQ a diameter? Converse. Converse angle in semicircle. Converse angle in what? In semicircle. Converse angle in semicircle. Converse angle in semicircle. Any question? No, sir. No question. Right, we move on. Similarity and proportionality. The prop theorem is next. So obviously in 10.1.1, we have proven that SQ is the diameter of the smaller circle. SQ is the diameter of the smaller circle. We have proven that. 10.1.2. Right, we need to prove right now that RT is RQ squared over RP. Right, so at this point to actually prove this, we decide the triangle in which to work. So now we have RT, for example, RT, because we need to prove that RT is RQ squared over RP. In which case, therefore, in this results, we have exactly RT, but we also have RQ, we also have RP. Okay, the question is in which triangle is it going to work? We're going to work in triangles. Triangle RTQ. And triangle RQP. Right, now, first things first, 
We're going to have that Z. So we're going to work in triangle RTQ and triangle RQP. The angle T is equal to the angle Q3. The angle T equals the angle Q3. Why? Or you can start, yeah, that's fine. The angle T equals uh, the angle Q3 because we know that um, QP itself is a common tangent. PQ is a common tangent, and therefore this is the Tenko theorem. Ten code theorem. So that then Q one plus Q two is ninety degrees. Q one angle Q one plus the angle Q two equals ninety degrees. Why is this the case? Q1 plus Q2 is 90 degrees because we have an angle in semi. Semicircle. Right, so, yeah, we have that. The angle P is 90. In other words, therefore, the angle Q1 Plus the angle Q2 is 90 degrees. Okay, yeah. Is equal to the angle P, which equals 90 degrees. Why? Because uh, these are both equal to 90 degrees. So these two angles, Q1, Q2, and P, are both equal to 90 degrees. Now we have a remaining uh, um, side for uh, the remaining angle. The angle R1, the angle R2. So the angle R1 is equal to the angle R2. All right. So the angle R1 equals the angle R2. Why would this be the case? R1 equals R2, angles of triangle. Angle R1 equals angle R2, and these are angles of triangle. Okay. And as a consequence, we're able to see, therefore, that we have that the triangle. So, therefore, the triangle R, RTQ is similar to the triangle RQP. Okay, because of angle, 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 angle. As a consequence, what we're able to establish here is therefore the fact that you can take RT over RT over RQ. You can take RT over RQ. In other words, you can take RT over RQ is equal to RQ over RP, and then it is equal to TQ over QP. RT over RQ is equal to RQ over RP, TQ over QP. So that in the end,
Okay, so we have this. So right now we have R T. You cross multiply. Right, if you cross multiply, then uh, in, in this equation, you're gonna take the first two. Right, we have RT is equal to the RQ, RQ, which will give us RQ squared over RP. All right, and that is the result. And that is the result. So can you, yes. I'm sorry, my Wi-Fi disconnected. Can you like repeat? Oh, repeat, from, repeat, that's fine. Um, R, R1 is equal to R2. I think right. that's when you Okay, 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 that's fine. Yeah, R1 equals R2. The, you see, the thing is that we are dealing with the triangle RTQ, RTQ and the triangle RQP. And then we already have that first Q3 is equal to T. In other words, we're dealing with this triangle here. But you can see that Q3 is equal to T. But also this angle is 90 degrees as much as this one is 90 degrees. So that now we're only left with R1 and R2 in these two triangles because this angle equals this and this is 90, that is 90. So R1 must be R2. Why is R1 R2? Because these angles of the triangle, like the third angle that is remaining in, in each of these triangles. Right, so as a consequence, therefore, is uh, that the triangle RTQ is similar to triangle RQP uh, because uh, we have angle, 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 angle. And then now we actually therefore able to see that we have taken this in order in the following way, such that the angle R equals angle R, the angle T is equal to angle Q, T equals Q, and Q is equal to P. Q equals P, Q equals P. So these are in the right order. And if they're in the right order, then we can take the right proportions and then say RT over the first two over the first two. So RT over RQ is equal to, for example, um, RQ over RP, which equals TQ over, uh, for instance, QP. Right, now if you cross multiply, so that RT is RQ squared over RP. Right. So, yeah. Yeah, any question? Proportionality again. Okay. Because oh. I, un I understand, but I don't understand to the extent where I could do it by myself. Okay. Are you saying, suggesting yes. that we do another question? No. We can do another question, but I was just suggesting that we, we reteach proportions and okay. structure and how it works. Oh, okay, that's fine. Okay, that's okay. We shall discuss it. All right, that's fine. And we'll continue. Right, so the proportionality theorem now has been applied here. In 10.2, the question is, if MS is 14 units, MS is 14 units, PQ, PQ is the square root of 640. Calculate giving reasons the length of the radius of the larger circle. Calculate giving reasons the length of the radius of the larger circle. Right, so in other words, we want to find the radius if S is the center, therefore, we want to know the radius, either TS or, or instance, um, SR. But there are a couple of things that we most certainly already know. So in other words, one can actually look at this and say, we need, for instance, um, RS, you know, right. But we can first be interested in knowing that, for instance, um, RT, from the previous question, RT is equal to RQ squared over RP. 
So we take that. RT is RQ squared over RP. RQ squared over RP. So this one was proved. It was proved in 10.1.2 above. Right, so MS is what? MS is 14 units. And then QR. Now QR is exactly 28 units. Why would QR, if this is 14, QR is what? Okay, because if this is 14, but S is the midpoint from grade 10, there's something called the midpoint. Midpoint theorem. Right, something we call the midpoint theorem. Midpoint theorem. Right, so that this one is 28 units. What is RP squared? What is RP squared? Right, so in the case of RP, you can use Pythagoras theorem because this is like the hypotenuse. So RP is a side, so that RP squared is 28 squared minus 28 squared minus the square root of 640 by Pythagoras theorem. 640, and you square this, Pythagoras. So that we have R, RP squared is 144, and you take the square root of RP squared, the square root of 144, and then you have RP, the square root of 144 is 12 units. So we found that RP is 12 units. Right, so in other words, now we're back. And we have this particular result here. So RP is 12, RQ is what? 28, so we're done. Divide like this and then say hands. Uh, this is actually exactly RQ squared over RP. What is RQ or QR? RQ is already 28 by the midpoint theorem because already if this triangle, a line segment that joins the midpoint of two sides of a triangle is equal to half the third side because um, also it is um, parallel the third side. So that RQ is 28. RP is 12. So that in the end, if you simplify these things, you get 196 divided by 3. That is RT. So you get that the whole of R to T is exactly 196 divided by but we want the radius because now the RT is like the diameter so that radius is half RT the radius is half of the diameter half RT what is RT is 196 divided by 3 98 divided by 3 units 98 units 
98 units. Any question? Because we had to find the length of the radius of the larger circle, and we found the radius by taking half the diameter RT, and therefore we got the answer. Any question? No, sir. Okay, pretty clear. Okay, we move on to the next one. Move on to the next question as follows. Write more proposal the theorem here. Write in the diagram. M is the center of the circle. M is the center of the circle. There it is. A, B, and C are points on the circle such that A, C equals B, C. We have that exactly AC equals BC. PA is a tangent to the circle at A. Right, at the point A, you can see that PA is a tangent. PQ is drawn parallel to CA. Okay. To meet BA produced at Q. BC produced meets PQ at R. And AR is drawn. Let the angle Q be equal to X. Determine giving reasons four other angles each equal to X. We start again. Four other angles each equal to X. Okay. There we are. There we go. What do you think is the next angle that is equal to X? If Q is X. What do you think? So what yes. does the 10, can I ask, what does the 10 quad theorem say about the, the, the lines? Yeah, the are the argument is so yeah, the technical theorem says that the, the angle between a tangent to a circle and a chord equals the angle in the alternate segment. So the angle between a tangent to a circle and a chord, this angle equals the angle subtended by this chord. This chord that makes the angle with the tangent subtend an angle in the opposite segment. So this other one that state something about the the lines of um a tangent coming from the same point are equal oh yes yeah like tangents drawn from the same point outside a circle are equal to each other so if you have that these two tangents oh, yeah. are drawn from the same point outside a circle they are equal to each other right okay. that's when you are seeing like two tangents like a tangent there the blue one and the red one you know, okay. and if they're drawn from the same point, like they're drawn from the same point outside the circle, then they're equal to each other. Yeah? Yes, sir. No, I was just refreshing. Okay, that's way. fine. <laughs> that's okay. So we're right back in business. We want four. Four other angles each equal to X. Determine giving this is four other angles each equal to X. What do you think? So, so we can't say that, um, we can't say that Q is equal to P. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I mean, that'd be very interesting, but why? That's the thing. I don't know why. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it'd be very interesting to see. But yeah, I mean, if, 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 if you know, we know that PA is a tangent because they said here, PA is a tangent to the circle at A. But what other tangent is there? We're not told. We're only given like one tangent. Okay. So what do you think? What do you think? 
We are not we are not in a hurry. We are not in Harare, Zimbabwe. We are not in Harare. We maybe there's you know a haste and a hurry. People are in a hurry. No, we are relaxed. We are chilled. That is the slang. We're chilled. So we are chill is the contemporary slang. The question is, we need four. Determine giving reasons four other angles equal to X. Angle Q is X, but four other angles equal to X. Okay, we go back to grade 10 and we can see. Because this one is parallel to this one. This one is parallel to this one. And therefore, these angles here, the angles in F like this. So this angle is X and this one is going to be X. X, X. And these are the kinds of angles we want. And these are corresponding angles. The angle A1 equals X. Um, the reason is that we have corresponding angles. Why corresponding angles? Because they have parallel lines. What are the parallel lines? PQ is parallel to CA. PQ is parallel to CA. PQ is parallel to C A. Next. Right, so obviously it follows therefore that this angle is also X. What is the next angle that is equal to X? Obvious. The next angle that is equal to X. B is equal to X. B is equal to X. B equals X. Well done. B equals X. Y. Angles opposite equal sides. Angles opposite equal sides. Next. Another angle equal to X. Another angle equal to X. Okay. Another angle equal to X. What is it? Yup. Another angle equal to X. What is it? I don't think I can see the other ones now. Okay, from grade 11. The angle between a tangent to a second and a chord equals the angle in the alternate segment. So there's an angle between a tangent, PA, and a chord equals the angle subtended by this chord, and this chord subtends the angle X, so also A2 is X. So, and then the other one, P, is also equal to X, then alternate angles. Well done, well done. P is also equal to X because these are alternate angles. Why are they alternate angles? Because PQ is parallel to what? CA. But also A2 is X and this is the 10 chord. Turn chord. Theorem. Ten chord theorem. The A two is X by the ten chord theorem. Therefore, the P angle P is X because uh, these are angles in Z because of the ten chord theorem. Right, we are good. So we have populated this diagram with a lot of the X X X X.
One, two, three, four. We found the four angles. So which means that we found X, 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 X. Okay. If this is true, then prove that ABPR is a cyclic quadrilateral. Prove that ABPR is a cyclic quadrilateral. Okay, here it's here is A, B, P, R, A, B, P, R. Prove that A, B, P, R is a cyclic quadrilateral. So what should we do? How should we prove this? So we already have B and P equals to each other. We can yeah. say the end we can say they're in the same segment. Yeah. I think. And then. Yeah, I'm not sure after that. Okay. <laughs> That's fine. Remember, we are learning here. And we take no time to learn properly. Want to prove that ABPR is a cyclic quad. So to prove that A, B, P, R, A, B, P, R is a cyclic quad, we can just prove that angle B equals angle P. Angle B equals angle P. Right, so we note that the angle B is equals to angle P. Why? Because it was proved Proved in 9.2.1 above. Okay, because this one is X and that is X. So that the angle B equals the angle P, which is, um, they both equal to X anyway. It was, pro it was proven there. Proved in 9.2.1 above. Moreover, therefore, therefore, okay, if this one, is equal to this. Then these things, this shape resembles a bow tie. Angles in the same segment theorem. Okay, it resembles a bow tie. Angles in the same segment theorem. As a consequence, we therefore can say therefore. A. B. P. And R. A concyclic. A concyclic. A concyclic. So when you say concyclic, do you mean like converse cyclic quad? Okay. Yes. By concyclic, we mean that they they lie on the circumference of the of the same circle. You know. Okay. Yeah, points are concyclic if you have A, B, C, D. So A, B, C, and D are concyclic. And the word con has to do with um, lying on the circumference of the same circle. Cyclic has to do with the circle, but con has to do with the sort of common, common circle. Okay, All right. So we continue. So that now A, B, P, and R are concyclic. Because we have that the B is equal to P, so that A, B, P, and R are concyclic. And therefore, if they are concyclic, meaning they lie on the circumference of the same circle, therefore, A, B, P, R is a cyclic. It's a cyclic quadrilateral. It's a cyclic quadrilateral. Why is it a cyclic quadrilateral? Converse angles in same converse angles in same segment theorem. Converse angles in same segment theorem. Okay, because now we have first realized that angle B is X, but also, the angle P is also X, and it was proven, oh, it was proved in 9.2.1 above. A, B, P, and R are concyclic. A, B, P, and R are concyclic. Therefore, 
ABPR is a cyclic quadrilateral. ABPR is a cyclic quadrilateral. Converse angles in the same segment theorem. Angles in the same segment. Angles yes. in the same segment. Okay, so yeah. So we've proven that ABPR is a cyclic quadrilateral. ABPR is a cyclic quadrilateral. We've proven that. By proving that the points A, B, P, and R are concyclic points, and uh, because we found angles in the same segment, and that meant that if we have angles in the same segment, then the, the four points involved are actually concyclic points. We prove the next question. Right, in the next case, you already know that this one is X, this one is X, this one is X, and that one is X. But also we know that ABPR is, 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 is actually uh, a cyclic quadrilateral with concyclic points. We need to prove now the proportionality. Here it comes again. Here it comes your test. Something you love the most. So we need to prove that BA over BQ. BA over BQ is equal to BC over um, QR. Okay. The, the examiner twisted it a little bit. It's just a small twist. Because in principle, you would expect BA over BQ because you are dealing with in triangle. In triangle, for instance, BQR. In triangle BQ, or you then say like VA over BQ is equal to BC over BC over, yeah, you take BC over BR. You take BC over BR. Okay. So now we're going to actually uh, realize that in triangle BQR BA over BQ is equal to BC over BR. Okay, and the reason for this is the proportionality theorem. The proportionality theorem. AC parallel to QP. AC parallel to QP. Okay, because AC is parallel to QP, then you use the proportionality theorem and say BA over BQ is BC over BR. This is the proportionality theorem. If you don't want to say if you don't want to say proportionality theorem, if you don't want to say proportionality theorem, you say that line parallel one side. Line parallel one side of triangle. In other words, you can say the reason or that. But we just second see the the B A B A B Q B Q B C B C. It's only the Q R. So we're able to see that, but Q R is equal to B R. But Q R. Right, QR is equal to BR. Why? Because this one is X and that is X. So this triangle is isosceles, this. X and X. So that you have the sides opposite equal angles. Sides opposite equal angles. Therefore, therefore, BA over BQ equals BC over QR. BC over B 
BR. So BA over BQ is BC over QR. Excuse, over QR. Okay, so yeah, we use the proportionality theorem to write out the fact that BA, because now we have these two parallel lines, so that BA over BQ is BC over BR. But simultaneously, QR is BR. QR is BR. So that wherever there is um, QR, then it is equal to BR. With QR, it is equal to, wherever there is BR, we can put QR. Any question on this proportionality theorem results? No, sir. Okay, we move on to the next question. We move on to the next question. Okay, now, more often than not, you'll be expected to prove this theorem. So, um, in, in November, in November 2023, they asked the learners this question in the November examination, you know. So they either ask you this, obviously they ask you this. So it can appear in the trials, it can appear in the thing, in the, yes, please. So can we do proportionality questions after? Because I generally don't understand properly. Okay, that's I understand, fine. I don't understand. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, we shall do, we shall do. What does the yeah, I can do it after you explain. Well, after yeah, you after talk. I explain to this theorem. Okay, because you might just know how to prove this theorem. Right, and the theorem states that in the diagram, A, B, this is how the question came in the, in the November 2023 exam of the students who wrote in November last year. In the diagram, A, B, C is a triangle. So you have A, B, C is a triangle. D and E are points on the sides, A, B, and A, C. D and E are there. Use the diagram above to prove the theorem, which states that the line drawn parallel to one side of a triangle divides the other two sides proportionally. That is proof that A, D over D, B is A, E over E, C. Okay, to prove this theorem, actually, we perform a construction. So to actually do this, you join BE and CD and draw and draw H1. Right. So for example, you you join BE and DE and draw H1 from what? And draw H1 from, from E perpendicular to AD and right and uh, you good? And H2, H2 from D perpendicular to AE. All right, so you have this. You have that. Okay, so you have this. H1, H2. Let's look at the proof. Area. Triangle ADE. Area triangle BDE. Right, if you look at the area 
you so you you actually construct the H1 from E that is perpendicular to AD and H2 uh, from D that is perpendicular to AE. So that the area of the triangle ADE is the same as what? Right, so you're gonna look first at this side here that is the AD. So you're gonna have half AD multiplied by the height. Look at the AD, the height is H1. Um, right, divided by the area of the triangle BDE, which is half the base, BD multiplied by the height H1. AD over BD, area, area triangle, ADE, area triangle, DEC, okay, now we have the other one, which is half AE, H2 divided by half EC. Okay, if you look at the triangle, DEC is half base EC, the height is H2. Half and H2 cancel out, giving us exactly AE over EC. Just like that. Write the area. Triangle ADE is equal to area. Triangle ADE. Right. At the top, we have ADE, ADE. But the area of triangle ADE at the top is equal to ADE at the bottom. And this is just a common common triangle, but, but area, triangle BDE, area, triangle DEC, same base, and height, same base and height. Okay, the area of the triangle BDE is equal to the area of the triangle DEC because these two triangles have the same base, right, have the same base DE and the same height, same base and height. And moreover, same base and height is because these two triangles, um, BDE and the triangle DEC, lie between uh, the same parallel lines. Right, so uh, DE is parallel to BC, like so. Now, if you look at this very carefully, what then we're able to observe is that area, Area triangle ADE. Area triangle BDE. Area triangle ADE. Area triangle DEC. Right, so as a consequence, we can say, therefore, that this area over area is equal to this area over area. And uh, obviously, the top one is AD over BD. The bottom one is AE over EC. AE over EC, like this. And therefore, we have uh, concluded the result. Any question? This is the kind of proof you'd be expected to, to do in the exam. So 
What do you think about the proof? Do you have any question about it? Because we were expected to know this. It's, it's no, sir. Okay, good. So it's there in the exam. It's there in the exam. So you must make sure you recall the proof. Okay, you remember. Yes, sir. All right, good. No question. No question, sir. All right. So now let's continue a little bit. Let's continue a little bit. If the diagram O is the center of the circle, so when O is the center of the circle, use the diagram to prove the theorem which states that the angle subtended by a chord at the center of the circle is equal to twice the angle subtended by the same chord at the circumference of the circle. Right is proof that angle top, angle T O P, angle top is equal to two times the angle T K P. So let's do a construction. Let's do a construction. So you draw. Draw K, K O and produce. So you draw K O and produce. Okay, this one you need to remember it also. Draw K O and produce. So you'd have to do this like that. Immediately you're able to put one, two, one, two. So that the angle O1 is equal to the angle K1 plus the angle T. Exterior angle of triangle. Exterior angle of triangle. But the angle K1 is equal to the angle T. Angles opposite equal size. Angles opposite equal sides. The angle O1 is equal to K1 plus K1, which is 2K1. The angle O2 is K2 plus angle P. Right, and uh, the angle O2 is K2 plus P, exterior angle of triangle. Right, so obviously you have that. The angle O2, so this one here, you can say, but you can actually then come here and say, but the angle K2. It's equals to angle P. Angles opposite equal size. So that the angle O2 becomes K2 plus K2, which is two angle K2. And uh, therefore, therefore, the angle O1, the angle O1, right, the angle O1 plus the angle O2, what is the angle O1? It's twice K1, twice K2. And then you're adding O1, O2. But O1 is twice K1, O2 is twice K2. So you add them up. Sorry, to be twice K1, K2. Which means that for the angle TOP is K1, K2, which is 
two times the angle TKP, like that. Okay. Any question about this proof from Grady Lance? No. No question. No, sir. I just have to remember it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You just need to remember it. You need to remember it because this is from a past exam paper. This is from a past, a past November paper. All right. I'm looking at the time and we have gone a little bit beyond the time. Meaning that yes, we're going to plan more. Uh, in our next discussion, we shall do more proportionality and similarity. Simulation proportionality. Okay. Sir. Right. I must thank you for joining us. So uh, we're going to actually, let me see if I can, I can get a homework. Okay. This one is going to be a home activity. Right. So this one here is your home activity. Okay. I'm going to send the recording after this. Right, so yes, in the, yeah, in the diagram, O is the center of the circle, O is the center of the circle, A, B, C, D is a slightly quadrilateral, A, B, C, D is a slightly quadrilateral. If angle O1 is 4x plus 100 degrees, the angle open is 4x plus 100 degrees, the angle of C is x plus 34 degrees, calculate giving reasons the size of the angle x, of, of yeah, the size of x, is it the size of x that appears in the 4x, it appears in the angle C. So it's five marks there, just a giveaway. And it was also after having this discussion. I can't give you so many homeworks. I have like tons of questions, but I'm sure we all we always have next time. Okay, at least yes, both you. exams. Right. Thank you so much. Until next time, take care and goodbye. Thank you, sir. Bye, sir. Thank you. Goodbye.